I know the people, they know this thing. People champagne, I am on the scene. More refreshing than some Listerine. Stylish, polish, but my shit is clean. I know the people. You know, first off, I want to. Um, if anybody want to fight, if anybody got anything to say about the Sixers, you know, this year I'm just not here for it. You know, I'm not here for it. Um. It's a lot of reasons why I just didn't have any energy for them, uh, even just going into the bubble. Uh, this year, they didn't play like, you know, a team that was supposed to be assembled together to win. Um, with losing Jimmy Butler, uh, J.J. Reddick, even T.J. McConnell. Um, they let go. It wasn't a lot of op other options out there to help, you know, build the team a little bit more, but they didn't re-sign the players that helped get them and uh, gave them that type of uh, what announcers would say swag and cachet to push them over the top and, you know, be a top contender in the East. So I really don't have any energy towards them. And then um, you have to worry about just everybody's durability. Uh, I think Tobias has been the most durable in these uh, two years. However, he's not consistent. And we don't know. I mean, he's going to be a solid small forward. But with the team that we have, we need scores, shooters. You know, so Tobias isn't one of the best shooters. He, he always just gets to the hole. He may take a, a fadeaway jumper in the paint, but that's not what we, that's not what we need. That clutters the paint uh, a lot, a lot. And when we clutter the paint, what, are, what is Joel Embiid able to do? And what is uh, Al Horf able to do? Nothing, because all that, there's no space. And then you have Ben Simmons who doesn't shoot. So that's a whole nother um, layer to why they aren't good. And to me, I just thought about it. They are just a, a decorated Knicks team, you know, like they get your hopes up and nothing. Nothing. You get so close last year by a shot, and this year you just regress so far back that everybody, all your fans and supporters are just like, what? We don't, We it's just nothing. And then Ben Simmons gets uh, hurt, his knee in the bubble. So it's just like, what else? You know, and with Ben Simmons not being able to shoot, I said this last year, he's a glorified power forward. And once they put him in the dunker spot, I you know, I think they... Uh, can be more successful. Uh, I think that you should put Joel at the five, keep him at the five. You put Ben Simmons at the uh, four. Tobias Harris is interchangeable. And if we had to trade him to get like a Devin Booker, um, Buddy Heald, uh, I'm even here from Michael J. Porter. We were supposed to get him, but we we passed on him. We passed on Jason Tatum for Mark, Markel Fultz that didn't pan out with us. And... And those were all shooters, people that actually could hoop, they could play, but they were you could see that they had a consistency of shooting. And so uh, with the Sixers, you got to worry about how are they going to score. Like everything can't be through um, Joel Embiid unless, like if you watch the end of the game, well, uh, I can pull up a few clips uh, where he was in the corner. He was like, you know, a guard. So unless you have him running the whole offense, you can't start everything with a pick at the top and have Jason Richardson coming around for a three that he's not consistent shooting. Like, they have a team of just players that can play but aren't consistent. And I also don't think that um, they have enough competition at practice to make themselves better. Like, Joel B, who is he? who's going to make him better? Bobon was a bad let go as well. Bobon, before Thank we let you, you go, I gotta hear it. You rang. <laughs> you rang. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love, love you, Bobon. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Bobon. Thank you, brother. Yeah. I think Bobon would is a way better asset than uh, signing Al Horford, which we gave him a lot of money to do nothing, right? Uh, so I think that's one of the problems that they don't have in practice. So that how are they supposed to get better? And I think once the pressure uh, gets on them and they start pressing them, all they, it speeds them up. And I don't think they're mature enough to handle that type of uh, – and those, be in those situations. And so Brett Brown, I don't think he's um, – 
prepared them enough to be successful for the playoffs. Not even in the midseason, I don't think he's he was able to. And he's a great coach, and everybody wants to give him, oh, well, he was around when they were trash and going through the process. But when they had... Before they lost Jimmy Butler, that's when they should have said it's either Jimmy Butler or the coaching should have let the coach go, to be honest. Should have signed Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson is out there. Um, and another one, spacing. We talked about spacing when Tobias Harris and everybody else is down low trying to make two-pointers. This is You have to be able to shoot. You have to be able to shoot. This is the NBA. That's what they told me that my whole life. You got to be able to shoot. If everybody was going to the hole, anybody could get in because there's nobody holding defense. Uh, they have to be able to stop the fast break. We'll, I'll talk about the Lakers later on um, about stopping the fast break, and I always I don't see too many teams stopping the fast break, which which uh, doesn't allow them to set up or get fast offense. It, you have to think if you can if you when you break down the fast break, it, it makes the other players think, right? Instead of just doing what's natural to them, and when you do things that's natural to you, you're comfortable. So you're going to be comfortable taking, you know, a, a lay of a, a, a contested three coming down, like just pulling up, or you know, anything else, right? Um, I don't think this went anybody too. If you're going to foul, foul. Don't let them get that easy two points. You know, foul them, make them earn it. Um, but Richardson, I don't think he needs to be playing. I don't think he needs to be playing. I don't think he's um, – he's second, third – he's third string caliber. You know, he's way off being a sixth man of the year or, or anything. But I don't think he's starting caliber material. And our trades that we made, they've made us regress. And now we look like a dumpster. And I don't like that. Um, so that's for the Sixers. And so um, I watched the Laker game, and so I'm glad they won. Um, but I do think they should start J.R. Smith. Why? Uh, because um, him and LeBron may have a better chemistry than what Danny Green is providing, and what Danny Green is providing isn't enough. He's he, starting from the opening shot. He missed the layup, and he's missed floaters, and AD um, cleaned up his misses that were point blank. And then his shooting, uh, very spotty. Uh, I realize if you're you're not going to stop Damian Lillard, because nobody is, you need to put a better sh scorer or shooter in, point blank period. Y'all don't look like y'all running in the offense, so if y'all not running the offense, so you just need to put a better shooter in. You're not really holding defense. I have clips to show you that you're not holding deep in and watch these clips. Good sweet move there from Kyle Kuzma for his first field goal. Tatum gets a running start. gets a running start. Gary Trent for three. I agree with Mark. I'm not going to let him play against bench guys one on one. What I don't get is, it, so at the beginning of this play, James to the rim. 13. Make that. So it looks like they're in a the 3-2 defense, but they may be in a man zone. But it looks like a 3-2 defense. But they end up doubling right here, Carmelo. I agree with Mark. Which leaves Nurkic right here, which Kuzma's in the right position. And then LeBron has to play basically outfielder right here. Which leaves LeBron in bad trouble because if it gets swung right here, if, if the ball gets passed right here and kicked over here to uh, Trent Jr., then if he doesn't want to take the shot, LeBron has to go right here. And if he doesn't take the shot, then Hazonia is going to take the shot for the three. So Dwight Howard, they don't need to double Carmelo. Carmelo's going to score if he's going to score. You're not going to stop him. 
So, but you can't leave Nurkic because that's going to be easy score. So, what they need to do is don't double. Play man up. That's your man. Hold your man. If he scores, he scores. But you're just leaving threes open. And that's how people get to leave because you, you let this happen. Because now you leave people in bad predicaments. They're, they're, this recovery is... That recovery is not fast enough. This this distance and this distance, that's too far to cover. And that's why they can get up threes. Get up threes. It's easy. You, you see the spacing. This is what needs to be corrected. Don't double. Here's the next play. Of, of ways that just I don't understand. One on happen. one as Nurkic Here's the next play. scores. Just chance. You got it. in the right position, the white. To overcome talent if the ball is right here why is there three people on this one person it when there are obviously other spaces that need to be managed so now you get caught down here and now if they just keep on swinging this ball around that's gonna be what another three this is the defense that I understand. One person, this man, who knows him? I mean, he's he's in the NBA, right? But is he enough for LeBron to come over, Dwight that Dwight Howard to come over, and uh, Marcus? I think I think that's Marcus uh, to come over. No, you got to worry about this. A two is not more than three. I don't know what league it is, but that is not more than that. So you need to cover this. Why is he not already down? Like this is why this this he not he can't sit down like because he should be going this way this way over the pick so therefore he doesn't have to show that hard he can stay right here so if he falls down he's already root with him and then he can stay right here I just want to make sure because there's nothing happening right here so he can do take all this that's all these clips will show you that y'all you guys aren't holding the best defense. So, the best thing is, put JR or Deion Waiters in, start them. Kyle Kuzma, start him. Um, KCP is a great player. Um, I don't think he deserves, he, de he shouldn't get as much time as he's getting. And I don't know why um, the change hasn't been made. We all, you're all grown men. You have to put your pride aside for what's better for the team. And if you can't do that, you'll be like any other LeBron team. You'll be in your own way. Off the court and on the court. You know, when you watch these teams that play as a, a team, like you can say Golden State. That's one of the best teams I've ever seen where everybody can score. Look at the Blazers. Everybody can score. So it's not just one person that's depending on, like, you know, AD or LeBron. If they don't get off, then who else is going to get off? Nobody. So I'm glad AD was able to get off like he did. Um, I'm glad LeBron didn't have to work as hard so he can save himself for the next game. But uh, the, what I'm more glad about, I've seen the urgency in, Le in LeBron by himself. You know, it's that's what is when – when you can see that urgent factor – that shows you that they take the game serious. And that should be from the tip, game one. I don't want to hear it's a fill out game. Because guess what? You lose, it's a win or lose. And at your point in career, you don't have forever. You know what these guys are. You know who that, you've seen it. If you watch tape, there's no point of filling out. You watch the tape. You can watch numerous of tape. You see what he's been doing. He's the MVP. So when you know somebody's the MVP, you're going to guard them a certain type of way. But the excuse is, oh, Avery Bradley is not there. But guess what? You got other defenders on the team. And if, like, if you're not going to actually stop him because he's going to get his numbers, put other scores in the game. Uh, so I am about to watch the Clippers game. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, Dallas is winning right now. I'm hoping Dallas wins. Um, not just because I don't want LeBron to lose to the Clippers. Uh, I like Dallas. I like uh, the duo of Porzingis and um, what is his name? Luka Doncic and Boban. And I like uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., you know, Seth Curry. So they, they have a, de a decent team that I definitely like. Um, so I'm definitely paying attention. 
Uh, other teams who I'm paying attention to, even though Denver lost, I like what they got going. Uh, the Utah Jazz just put it on them earlier a lot. They put it on them. So, uh, and Jimmy Butler and then the Pacers won. And with Jimmy Butler and the uh, Heat beat the Pacers. Uh, it was a good game. I watched the highlights. Uh, Toronto is up 3-0 against Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn is starless, but also is um, Toronto. But they just came off a championship. So they have a little bit better chemistry. Um, and, yeah, that's all the games I've caught up on. I'll be catching up on some more uh, later. Well, this is the last game of the night, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'll do a recap of this, and then I'll just put all this out, out together. So stay tuned. 2020. We doing it again. It's crazy. 227. They ain't gonna stop us, though. We ain't gonna let them. Let's go. Whoa. Whoa. Fist in the air. Out past curfew, cause we don't care. Six feet distance, nigga, don't play. Niggas get gone like each and every day. I'm supposed to be numb, nigga.